Spencer Myers of Glacier Farm Media. I'm here with Jason DeVoe of Sprayers 101. So Jason, you guys gave a demonstration to some farmers here at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show talking about the recirculating boom sprayer system. So that's a mouthful, Let, help us understand it. So well, why don't you show us kind of what you explained yesterday to the farmers and then we'll break down how that applies to the actual sprayer behind us. No problem. So what we did is we talked about how a conventional boom is plumbed but that's a lot of black lines and it's really hard to follow with your eyes. So we thought maybe a better way to do it would be to have the audience build the plumbing diagram right there in front of us. And we used a bunch of colorful pool noodles. We got to track flow where it went or where it didn't go on a conventional sprayer. And we took it from there and built it up to the recirculating boom. What we have here is the Rogator C, uh, this has a liquid logic system. It's built in North America, introduced about two years ago. And I'm just going to walk down to the far end and show you what makes this different from a conventional boom. Okay. The pesticide, the line, is fed all the way over here to the end of the boom. This eliminates boom sections, these dead ends that historically may hold on to product and create problems with cleaning or carryover. The liquid then circulates through this nice smooth curve, very little if no pressure drop back through the boom being sprayed out the nozzles which is typical the nozzles are now spraying until the sprayer stops or takes a turn or maybe gets rained out at which point we don't want this line this line loaded with product we want to be able to push that product back into the tank so maybe we can use it later in which case we turn it off and the product circulates back up into the sprayer so when this thing stops spraying the product is still moving through the lines do you want to come over and say some more about this, Tom? Why, thank you, Jason. Isn't that subtle? What a good handle. <laughs> <laughs> you might be asking, so what, uh, how do I now control my sectional uh, controls? Uh, and the answer is that you have a shutoff valve on each nozzle body. Whereas before you had sections that were plumbed, and all the nozzles in that section, maybe 10 or 15 feet of them would be going on, now you have individual nozzles. And uh, that allows you much higher resolution, therefore chemical savings, uh, should you uh, have an odd-shaped field or something. Let's build a scenario. Why would this be a benefit to a grower? Let's say they've just loaded up at the beginning of the day, their lines are full of water and they're about to enter a field. What would normally happen? What normally happens is that they would be positioned right about where this sprayer is, right on the edge of the crop, uh, close to the ditch, and they would basically need to prime their boom. They need to fill it full of chemicals. That usually costs about 30 gallons of product to, to fill all the lines, and that product goes on the ground, a mixture of water first and finally uh, uh, pesticide. Same and time over and over again. It's, it's not a good idea. It's also money out the window, let's, uh, let's be frank. And then when the boom is primed, maybe a minute or two later, you go. It might cost 30 or 40 gallons. But this system, if it were to close off all the e-stops and the nozzles aren't spraying, it just rotates back to the tank and it's primed without spraying a drop. That's correct. So when you're priming, all the nozzles are off and the valve that allows it to go back to the, boo to the tank is on. So that is what that recirculation is all about. Let's keep going with the scenario. Let's say you get halfway done the day, the wind picks up or you get rained out and now you find yourself with the boom full of product but you can't continue. What do you do then? Well, traditionally what we do is we would basically either, again, park in this spot and see if we can draw water from our clean water tank and pump it out uh, the, or push it out the boom and it has to go out the boom because it has nowhere else to go in a, in a conventional plumb system and basically go back to that same spot where that has already seen chemical. With a recirculating system again your nozzles would be off and you would simply uh, open up this valve again you would draw water uh, from the clean tank push the plug of chemical back to the tank and then the overnight sitting of the of the sprayer doesn't create any adsorption onto the plumbing lines. So those are those are the advantages. You never have to prime and spray a drop. You can circulate clean water back to the tank or product back to the tank again without spraying a drop. You've got no dead ends to worry about during clean on and we also talk about each one of these nozzles have to have a shutoff, but that's kind of an advantage too, right? It's an advantage because it gives you highly resolved sexual control, which actually saves you money. And in our customers' experience uh, in, in Saskatchewan, we are seeing probably, uh, you know, three to five percent savings from a uh, compared to a conventional plumb boom when you have individual and nozzle control. Costs, three to five percent. Yes. Well, that's, that's a huge selling point for this all by itself. So we think this should be on more sprayers, don't we? I'm putting words right into your mouth if you didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing. Uh, you know, I think that we need to make it easier for our customers to protect the environment. Uh, with a conventional plumb system, it's, a, it's very hard to do because we have to prime and flush more or less stationary. 
Uh, with this kind of a system, it's easy to do. Well, let's end it here. You can buy this new on the Rogator. Also, our imports, Agrifac has it, Hardy has it, uh, the Connect for the dot that we saw here at the farm show has it. Or if you go to someone like Pommier, they can install aftermarket right on your sprayer, whatever sprayer you're driving. Yeah, Pommier actually brought the concept to Canada uh, more than a decade ago. With them yep. and both, and then I awesome. just realized that Jason became the interviewer there. Right? No, that was great. Right. But line. that's one of the better that videos. Matter? Yeah. Can you hear that's okay great. with the microphone? Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think we'll be able to... So Tom, Jason, that was a great presentation. I wouldn't be able to operate this quite yet, but I feel like I understand it much better. So you guys run a non-profit uh, called Sprayers 101. Why don't you just tell viewers where we can learn more about what you do and more about some of these products, like you said, some of the brands where we can find this stuff. So Sprayers 101 is in fact a non-profit that Jason and I write for. We also have guest authors on it. We have written an article about recirculating boom designs. We encourage people to look at them. Uh, existing Spurs can be retrofitted with this. And I think while we're at it, I think we should thank our sponsors. I mean, we are sponsored by uh, grower groups. So uh, Grain Farmers of Ontario, uh, the Saskatchewan, and Alberta and Manitoba, Canola, Pulse, and uh, Wheat Board uh, com uh, Commissions, I guess. Okay, so, great. That is Sprayers 101, over 250 articles, videos, downloadable apps, everything you never wanted to know about spraying. But useful nonetheless. And like I said, great presentation. Hopefully we'll be seeing this more and more and I liked what you said about trying to make this easier for farmers because I know that some guys kind of feel stuck in a rut when regulations or consumer trends seem to be pushing one way but the technology just isn't there. So I think guys are really going to appreciate this. Tom, Jason, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All good? Yeah. That was great.